Iraqis perished from the earth. And you know what? It turned out that their evidence, their intelligence, were flat out lies. And they knew they were lies. And when Colin Powell was standing in front of the UN, showing us pictures of chemical weapons facilities, that he knew he was lying. He knew it was fake intelligence. That's what's happening here today with the Syria war. They have an objective. Their objective is to take out any leader or any country in the Arab world, in the Middle East, that does not bow down to Wall Street, that does not bow down to the Pentagon, and they target those countries for destruction. And when they have an objective, when they have an objective, they fix their intelligence around that objective. And they make up stories, they create a narrative to justify what they are going to do. Because if they were honest about why they wanted to invade Syria, if they said, we got some billionaire oil investors and defense contractors and military industrial complex CEOs who want to see Syria fall and we want to use billions of dollars of your tax money and send your sons and daughters to go die, the people would say no. So they have to create a lie and say it's for humanitarian intervention. Do we believe that, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Do we believe that the people who say they want humanitarian intervention, the same people who just killed a million Iraqis in Iraq, do we believe that? No. Do we believe that they care about the use of chemical weapons when women in Fallujah cannot even have children today because the U.S. used so many chemical weapons on Fallujah? Do we believe their lies? No. That's why we're here to say hands off Syria and we're going to continue fighting and this is a decisive moment because the government is in crisis. They don't know what to do. They know the world isn't on their side. They know that we are not on their side. So this protest today is of crucial importance to make sure those politicians don't send us into another endless war for empire in the Middle East. Let's say hands off Syria! 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 Uh, we want to hear from some of the community organizations that mobilized for this action today. Uh, first, we're going to hear from Affirm, uh, which is an uh, amazing group of uh, Filipina feminists here in Los Angeles. Uh, so let's hear from Affirm. Make some noise. They've been organizing in the streets for 10 years against these racist wars. Let's hear it for them. Thank you. We are here representing Affirm, an anti-imperialist, transnational feminist, feminist women's organization because we oppose the interference of the U.S. in Syria. This is just another excuse for the U.S. to extend its reach and power into other countries to topple down the forces that oppose them. These are not attacks against chemical warfare. They are acts of aggression and violence to, de to demonstrate force and dominance. As transnational women of color, we know that a US, what a U.S. invasion means in Iraq, Afghanistan, in our families' countries of origin, Latin America, Asia, Pan-Africa. It means that women and children are disproportionately victims of military violence. It means the rape of women and children in addition to the economic and political pillage of entire countries. Instead of diverting our country's financial assets to funding a war machine, we need to focus on funding health care, education, and jobs here at home. Instead of fighting a war and murdering innocent people, what about instead fighting the war on women here in the U.S.? We stand with all you here today to oppose the brutal war and any attacks on Syria and demand hands off Syria. No new war, no new, no U.S. war in the in the Middle East. The women united will never be defeated. The women united will never be defeated. The women united will never be defeated. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Let's hear it again from Affirm. Our sisters and brothers, next I want to introduce someone who, uh, at the September 11th attacks in 2001, when those attacks happened, and the Bush administration right away started ramping up to go to war in Afghanistan, to go to war in Iraq, to go to war against Iran, to go to war against Syria, all of those countries that they listed in their axis of evil, that some people in the United States, you know, when George Bush had a 95% approval rating after September 11th in 2001, some people started organizing and mobilizing to stop those wars from happening. One of those was uh, Peter Lindsay, who was a high school student, when the September 11th attack happened, she became a leader in the anti-war movement 
and one of the founders of the Answer Coalition, which founded in 2001, just days after the September 11th attack. She's been an anti-war organizer ever since. Let's hear it for Peta. Good to see you, sisters and brothers. We've got to stop meeting like this. We've been here before, haven't we? We are here today because we are tired of our government lying to us. If you are tired of the lies, make some noise. I was doing interviews over there. Uh, one of the reporters asked me, you know, are you afraid? Isn't Syria a threat to national security? I said, hell no. Hell no, I'm not afraid of the people of Syria. Hell no, I'm not afraid of the people of the world. I am more afraid of what my government intends to do to those people. We are here today because we cannot stand by and let them wage war in our name. We cannot let them go bomb our sisters and brothers, people who are just like us, who want the same things we do, people who want to go to work, who want to raise their kids, who want good schools. We cannot let our government rain bombs down upon them and call it liberation. Sisters and brothers, if you're here to stop this war, make some noise. We've got to stay in the streets, sisters and brothers. We are the people. We are the majority. The latest poll came out so that only 9% of the U.S. public supports an invasion of Syria. Only 9%. But as Mike said earlier, 100% of the oil companies are behind it. 100% of Wall Street is behind it. And that's why they're, going, they're trying to go to war, sisters and brothers. They're going for the money. They're going for the oil. And they're taking our money as they do it. Sisters and brothers, we have record numbers of people on food assistance right now as those programs are getting cut, as they tell us there's no money. They are literally taking the food out of the mouths of our children and using it to fund their endless war for empire. Sisters and brothers, we say no. no! So I'm glad you all came out today. We've got to make this movement grow. As Mike said, I've been an organizer since 2001. I remember the days just after September 11th. I was 17 years old. I was in Washington, D.C. I was overwhelmed with the lies that our government was telling. I was overwhelmed with the racism against Muslim and Arab people that our government whips up. You know, this is a fundamentally racist campaign. They must whip up racism to get us to agree to their war. I, I went an organizer then. I kind of came into the streets and I haven't left this and brothers. We all must become organizers. We must stay in the streets and make this movement grow. Please sign up with an organization today. As Mike said, there are so many groups here today. Sign up with Answer if you've never marked with Answer before. And we expect you to stay in the streets. We expect you to bring your friends, your family, your whole community. We want to see everybody in the streets until this war is shut down. Thank you, sisters and brothers. Yeah, you know, it's funny. President Obama said Syria is a risk to national security. Do we believe that? No. You know what is a national security issue, I think? You know, they just closed over 50 schools in Chicago. 50 working class schools and public schools in Chicago. I think that's a national security issue, right? Yeah. I think if a bomb blew up those schools, we would call it a national security issue, right? Yeah. But when the government does it because they say there's not enough money, we're supposed to just accept it. But they have plenty of money to put into a cruise missile and kill other students halfway around the world. But you know what? When the rich want a war, when the oil tycoons want a war, when the military industrial complex CEOs want a war, do they send their own children? No. Is it their neighbors who come home in body bags? No. Is it their sons and daughters who lose their legs? No. no, it's us. They send us to go die. They send people who want to go to college, people who want a job, people who want a home and health care for their families. That's why. And we have a lot of military veterans out here today. I'm with an organization also called March Forward, a radical group of veterans and service members. I'm also on the board of directors of a group called Veterans for Peace. Uh, nationwide, very big organization. Right now we're going to hear really quickly from the president of Veterans for Peace here in Los Angeles, Michael Lindley. Let's give it up for Michael, another veteran here today. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't, uh, one of the things I see today is that a lot of young people here. This is important that you're here because this war is what you're going to end up paying for. And we got to stop it. we got to stop the money coming out of our pockets and take it and put it back into their into the, the, the young people's pockets where it belongs. That's right. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, Obama went to Congress, supposedly went to Congress and asked Congress to pardon Bush and his buddies. They actually did this. They wanted to cover that on That is, they are corrupt, they are illegal, and we have to stop them right today.
And we got to keep moving on forward. Right on. I'm with a place called Arlington West. We've been talking about the cost of war for almost 10 years now. If any of you want to find out about it, we're on the beach at Santa Monica. Every Sunday we've been on the beach there in, Sa in, in Santa Monica for 10 years. And we've been telling people about the corrupt wars that are going on. We've got to stop them. They want more. we got to stop them because they don't. That money's going to come out of the young people's pockets. And we've got to stop that. Thank you very much. Next, I mean, if you can see here today that we have a lot of people from the Arab American and the Syrian American community today. Let's make some noise for them. We don't want to look, be looking into the face of the people who have family members who are going to be bombed in today or tomorrow or the next day. That's really why we're out here today, to stand against the innocent people in Syria who will die under this onslaught by the U.S. war machine. I want to bring up a speaker from this organization, Arab American for Syria. Uh, let's hear it for Reza. All power to the people. All power to the people. I want to ask every one of you here that tell me, you know, which country in the past and present time has the bloodiest history of invasion, slavery, destruction in other countries. We know that. We know that one million people were slaughtered in Indonesia. They, they replaced, you know, a government, democratic government with Suharto in Iran 1953, in Chile, in Panama. This country, since the inception of coming to a government, has killed, invaded, and slaughtered thousands of people around the world. This is the first time when they invaded Yugoslavia, everybody stayed back, didn't do nothing. Now it's Syria, tomorrow is Iran, and next is China. We have all stand up and fight together and say no more war in Latin America, no more war in Middle East. Let's defeat the U.S. imperialism. It's the enemy of the whole world. Down with U.S. imperialism. Down with U.S. imperialism. Down with U.S. imperialism. Thank you, Reza. All right, next we're going to hear from a representative from a dynamic new organization. You may have heard of them. They're doing amazing things all over the country to stand up for the rights of the most oppressed people in the United States, the indigenous community that has endured the real brunt of not only the war machine, but the colonial machine that founded this country. Make, it no make some noise for I don't know more. I just came from the Mart Park. 50 years of looking for justice. And the, and the quality of life issues that we have with housing, with food, with our connection to sacred water, and to basically our fundamental right to being happy, to being free, and to have real choices. The documents of human rights around the world and our civil liberties here being chipped away by the idle minds and the stupidity of men signed documents from 500 years ago that do not ever deliver the promise of equity towards the sovereign, the nations of indigenous people. Globally, I Don't Know More Los Angeles is connected to I Don't Know More Japan, Papua New Guinea, Australia, Chile, Peru, you name it, women are not idle. It's an indigenous warriors women movement because the men, some men, not all men, have made decisions about where our resources for our energy are going to come from. How we're going to grow our food. How is it, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children, that we can allow this to happen globally without knowing that whatever happens in Peru is going to affect us here. Whatever happens in Japan Fukushima, forget it. It's over. Game over. We need each other more than ever. Our community is not just down the street around the corner. Our community is our global brothers and sisters. We had Sundance in South Dakota 
and my sisters came from there. Lakota sisters who shared stories of the lost women there. 16-year-old girl, after the prayer, was found dead in a ditch because the people that are putting that pipeline through grabbed her, sexually assaulted her for days. After she was gang raped, they left her for dead and dead. Her family members want to know why, who? But we don't hear about that in mass media news because it's not sexy. It doesn't sell the oil that we supposedly need. Well, I came here on mass transit. And I took the time to make the time to be the change. And guess what? We're not going anywhere. We're not going anywhere. We're here to get today together. And I plan to meet you here again with some more brothers and more sisters. And de definitely teach the young ones the real history of these United States. Because as we speak today, as we are here, they're ethnically wiping our education historically making it a one chapter deal, a one page deal, a one culture deal because they don't want us to be upset. They don't want us to be angry. They don't want us to know the truth. But the truth lives right here and the connections that I see here because you took the time, you took the bus, you parked your car, you carpooled, you walked, you skated, you bike rode to get over here to say no war in Syria. No war in Syria. No war in Syria. No war in Syria. Tuesday. Tuesday, I hope I see you because I have to announce it's the best kept secret. Major Western Summit Oil Conference. Ninth and Olympic for three days. September 3rd, Tuesday, from 4 to 8. The native brothers and sisters are going to be opening up with prayer and saying no more. No more, no more oil. The third and the fourth, it's, a, it's open to occupiers, it's open to move on, it's open to Iraqi veterans who want to take it on. They're having a golf tournament. They're having three days of a conference so that's been held here since 1959. I'll see you Tuesday, 9th and Olympic at 4 o'clock. Just make some noise, I don't know more. I know people are feeling hot, but uh, are you too hot to march through the streets of downtown Los Angeles? No! I thought. Too hot? I don't know. Can, I, can you tell me again? Are you too hot to march through the streets of downtown Los Angeles? No! Do you want to march through the streets so everyone can hear us? No! Do you want to make history today as the bombs are primed to launch and the people are standing and marching and demanding and saying, No war, you want to be a part of that history? No! I said, We're going to hear from one more speaker and then we're going to get a march going. Sister Bones, we know as we've been saying that this is, isn't about Syria, it's about all independent countries in the region. Iran is one of those countries that's targeted by the United States to be destroyed, for regime change, to be overthrown. We're going to hear from an Iranian-American an organizer here at the Anskirk Coalition, a Shah Advani. Let's hear it for Shah. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Do you remember some years ago we used to say, Bush lied. Bush life, what was the next one? Thousands People died. died, right? No, it's time to say Obama lied. People died. 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 Brothers and sisters, as an Iranian American, I'm here to tell you we are against any U.S. intervention in the region. If ever U.S. attacks Iran, we are going to make Vietnam look like a picnic to United States, United States Intervention Forces. I'm here to say there are so many reasons. There, are, there is no question that chemical weapons were used in Syria, but the question is who used it? Look at the, look at the fact that who benefited from use of chemical chemical weapons. Obviously, Syrian government is smarter than using chemical weapons the same day that UN, inter UN inspectors arrived in Syria. Come on. They could break one more big and use it. Who used chem Who benefited? Obviously, rebels, militants, terrorists is the real name. They are the ones who benefited from this. But the bigger question I wanted to leave you with is if, if terrorists use chemical weapons, do you have any doubt that U.S. imperialism also was involved? Can, 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 you, can terrorists in Syria do such a thing? 
can Saudi Arabia send those chemical weapons to Syria without the approval of Nobel Peace Prize winner Obama? Obama and his administration and their hands up to here is in the blood of Syrian people. And we are here to say, you can hide, you cannot hide, we know where you are, you are criminals, as well as much as the Bush administration was. Long live Syria, long peace, long live peace, and long live to all of you who have been here in this hot weather. Thank you, John. We're going to hear from one more speaker, then we're going to march. Let's give it up for John Parker from the International Action Center. Thank you, thank you, Answer for holding this. Uh, I just came back from, sorry I'm late, I just came from South Central Emerge Park. There was a commemoration for uh, Dr. Martin Luther King's march in 1963. And in that spirit, I'd just like to say that the bombs that fall on Syria tomorrow will explode in poverty on our neighborhoods here. We know that this makes no sense. The rebels were on the defeat. We know that the UN inspectors were in Damascus. It makes no sense. That, that, the, that the Syrian government would do what they say it did, but it does make dollars and cents. It yeah. makes dollars and cents when you understand that imperialism, like a tank, will do anything by any means for profits. They don't care how many they kill. Right now there's, there's four cruisers headed to Syria, 90 cruise missiles on each cruiser. Let me tell you just what one cruiser of those did. When I was in Iraq in 1996, I saw a shelter, a bomb shelter, that a cruise missile went through. And you look in the shelter and you see shadows of people, like it was us standing here, the shadows. Like in Hiroshima, the cruise missile came through. Bomb exploded in the shelter, a shelter where women and children would go when they heard the bombs because it was so scary at night and it incinerated them, and all that's left is the shadows. That's the horror of war. And we know that already 100,000 have been killed from arms and things from Saudi Arabia and the Gulf monarchy states that are loyal to the U.S. We say no more. 89% of the people are saying they don't want to even arm these terrorist rebels. Many of the folks are saying they don't even want, they don't want another war. So we have to be do what we're doing now, continue to fight. And we will be victorious if we continue to fight. Also, Obama just announced that on September 9th, he's going to ask Congress for war powers in order to go into Syria. Tuesday, next Tuesday, he's going to ask that thing. So on sep before September 9th, we have to come together united and have a demonstration to tell Congress, no more blood for oil. Thank you. How's everyone feeling? Yes. Make some noise if you want to march. Yes. Make some noise if you want to march. Yes. All right, sisters and brothers, here's how we're going to do this. We're going to stay militant but disciplined. We're going to follow that lead banner right there. Stay behind that banner. Stay following the sound card. We're probably going to take one lane of traffic to start. If we can take two, we're going to...